Last time I promised you a, an algorithm that lets us traverse graphs that have that cover uneven terrain and so let's see how an algorithm like that might work. Why does it say shift next to my mouse cursor? I don't know. Why does the software think it's important to tell me that I'm pressing shift when I already know that I'm pressing shift? Because I'm pressing shift? I don't know that either. But let's pretend that there is some kind of obstacle here in the terrain. Maybe a mountain or a lake or a poison dart trap. And we want our characters to avoid these obstacles as they traverse our graph. In our very first video, uh, no, it was our second video of this series. We accidentally took a circuitous route. But this time, we want to take that longer route because it will avoid these, these obstacles in our paths. So let's construct a graph that identifies these obstacles. To do that, we're going to add edge weights. We're going to add weights to the edge. Most edges will be weight 1, like these edges. But the edges that go through an obstacle, they're going to have a higher weight. This is an obstacle we really want to avoid, so we're going to give it something really high, like 8. You can make these values anything you want for your program, but in general you want higher values to be less desirable values. Less desirable um, places to go through. And we're going to devise an algorithm that takes these edge weights into account as we walk through the graph. And that algorithm is called Dijkstra's algorithm. It was first made by a mathematician named Dijkstra in the 50s. And here's how it works. It's actually really simple. It has two steps. Step one is to calculate costs of each path. And step two is to choose the lowest cost. And we also shouldn't forget to do the same thing we did last time, which um, you'll remember is we had to keep track of the path that we took as we progressed through the graph. So we have to remember the path backwards. Okay, let's get started. We're going to set up our initial node and we're going to give it an initial path cost of zero because we started there so it took no effort to get there. So we give it a zero. And Let's just, uh, let's just start with step one. Step one is calculate costs. We're going to calculate the costs of each of our neighbors. We're starting at this node, and in order to progress along this path, we have to exert one effort. You could think of it that way. And so zero plus one, that's how we do it. We take the value that's in the current node, and we add the value of the edge. So zero plus one, that's one. If we want to get to this node, we have to exert one effort. And in order to get from here to here, we have to do 0 plus 8 is 8. OK. And now the next step is to choose the lower of the two costs. So we're comparing 1 and 8. You can easily see that 1 is less than 8. And so we're going to choose 1. And now that we've chosen the lowest cost, we're going to remove our previous node from the running entirely. We're not going to visit it again ever for the remainder of the algorithm. And let's not forget to remember the path back. This is how we got from here to here, so that we can reconstruct the path at the end just like we did in our depth first search algorithm. I'm sorry, in our breadth first search algorithm. So now let's go back to step one. We're going to calculate the costs again of every neighbor of our current node. Here's our current node. Here's one of the neighbors, but we've already been there, so we're ignoring it. 
Here's the other neighbor, and the cost is really easy. One plus traveling again, uh, along this edge would be one more. So one plus one is two. Cost to get here is two. And that's all the neighbors this guy has, so let's move on to choosing the lowest cost neighbor. Remember that when you choose the lowest cost, actually I said neighbor, I really should have said node. We're looking at every node. So even though eight is not a direct neighbor of one, eight is still in the running. We're gonna compare eight and two. Every node that we've given a weight to, a cost to, we're gonna compare. So eight compared to two, obviously two is the lower uh, number, so we're going to make that the current node. We're going to get rid of this. We're not going to consider it again. And we're going to remember the path backward. Back to step one, let's calculate some neighbor costs. Uh, obviously this guy is out of the running, so we're not going to think about him anymore. If we want to think about this neighbor, it's going to be 2 plus 8. We took 2 to get to where we were, and it would take 8 to travel along this node. And so, oops, I can't add. 2 plus 8 is 10. Very good. Now, what about this guy? He already has a value. Well, the rule there is, since we found a faster way to get to him, we can just get rid of him. We know we're never going to take this route because it cost 8, but we found a way to get there with 2 plus 1 is 3. Very good, okay. So now we're gonna choose the lowest cost node out of all the nodes that we've given weights to. Three compared to 10. Well, it's pretty obvious to me that three is less than 10. So there's our node. And we're gonna remember the path back. So let's continue doing this. We calculate cost, three plus one is four. We choose the lowest cost, four is less than 10. Get rid of these guys. Remember our path back. And now we can see that we didn't need to get here using 10, cost 10, when we could have gotten here using cost four plus one is five. So he's gonna be our Final jump in this graph. We're going to remember our path back. And now we can reconstruct our path uh, the same way we did with our breadth first search by saying, uh, by just following it backwards and creating a list. So just following the red lines, you can see that we got to this path uh, using cost five, which is much better than the original cost 17 estimate that we wanted to avoid. If we go eight, plus one plus eight, that's 17. But we did much better than that, we did five. So now let's jump to the code and see it in action. Okay, here's some code. Um, first we take the current node, we look at all of its edges, see, we follow the edges and see what nodes they go to. If it's something we've already seen, then we continue as I discussed in the previous part of the video. But if the weight going through this edge, which is just the weight we've calculated so far, plus the path weight through the current node. If that happens to be less than whatever's currently in the node, then we update that node with a new path weight. And we say that it comes from uh, this node instead of maybe from any other node it may have come from. So we do that with all the neighbors to all the current nodes. And then we come down here and we look at all nodes that we haven't visited so far. We do a linear scan. Notice how we look through every single one of those unvisited nodes. That's going to be important later. So we look at the path weight, and if it's the lowest path weight, we remember it. We remember it. And we take it out of the set of nodes that we haven't visited yet. We mark it as seen, and then we can Continue to do this algorithm until we arrive at the target node, and then we reconstruct the path just like last time. So we can press F5. This will run. It's just like the previous um, demos that I've given on graphs. 
I've shown that the edges here are red. Those are the expensive edges that we want to avoid. The current node that we're considering is green. Any node we haven't considered yet is blue. And so we're going to calculate weights. The, uh, we're going to calculate path costs. The red node here is red because it's expensive to get through because we have to go through the red edge. But the black one is not very expensive. So red means more expensive, that's all. And then we pick the least expensive one and we continue to do this just like I did in the math section. And we can see at the end we reconstruct the path. The path is blue. Uh, so I kind of blew through that because I actually want to show you a much better visualization of this from Wikipedia. This is a Wikipedia animated visualization of Dijkstra's algorithm. And you can see it just cranking away at all of these uh, nodes. And it is going to find the shortest path right about now. There it is. There's the shortest path. But you'll notice the problem with this, that even though we never, I mean, this, no, this area out here and the corners here is obviously never going to get used by the algorithm. You can see that very plainly just by looking at it. But it still considers um, that space. You can see it fills up the entire space that's looking through. This is slow. There are many ways that we can improve the speed of Dijkstra's algorithm. Dijkstra's algorithm does have an advantage in that you can calculate the path from, any, from every node in this graph to the beginning node. You can do that very quickly. Um, but if you're just getting to one node in particular, you don't care about these nodes out here, then we want to develop some faster algorithms. And we're going to investigate some faster algorithms in the next few videos, um, starting with a way to speed up Dijkstra's algorithm. In particular, this part. This part where we have to visit every unvisited node in order to see which one is the lowest one the lowest valued one. Um, there's a much faster way to do that and we're going to look at it next video. See you then.